Hello everyone. Here we will discuss the special kind of vectors which are very useful for processing ML and DL applications. Here, whenever uh, we are uh, taking the uh, equation for given inputs, uh, we will use z equal to w1 x1, w2 x2, etc. wn xn plus bias. Here, the w is representing the uh, uh, weight vectors and x is representing the input in the given data set and then b is representing the bias. So, any kind of machine learning or deep learning algorithms we are using this linear sum then it can be represented by using z equal to w transpose x plus b x is representing all set of features given data set and which are the uh, weights which are associated with the uh, all inputs then here for example if you take the uh, neural network here uh, four inputs are there uh, four features are there then uh, each uh, uh, connection is associated with its own weights w1 w2 w3 w4 for the a1 the hidden layer neuron or output layer neuron you, you you can consider this is a single layer perceptron network and this neuron is associated with this four uh, uh, associated weight parameters and these four weight parameters are associated with the A3 neuron. So, here we can represent this all these weight parameters and the inputs and also bias parameters in the form of vectors that we will see one by one now. Here uh, when we are having the data set with only single sample with four features. So, this data set is having four features and only single sample. So, when we are having single sample the target output is also given how can we represent the input vectors so this input vectors can be represented all the features can be represented in the form of x1 x2 x3 x4 this is column vector so the column vector is useful to represent the given input data set sample by sample then uh, the, what about the associated uh, weight parameters? The weight parameters here we can represent by using again the vector uh, vectors or matrix. Here we are using the uh, here 2D uh, weight vectors. So here we are using look at that w1 w2 w3 w for the uh, neuron 1 and uh, this 4 for the neuron 2 this 4 for the neuron 3 so like that we can uh, use the uh, uh, matrix for representing the weight parameters suppose if you are having only one uh, one parameter or two parameter we can represent in the form of w1 w2 and the next one here the bias parameters we are having here b1 b2 b3 for all three neurons which, which can be represented by using the column vector then this uh, w transpose x plus b so as per this formula we can represent this all terms in the form of 2d uh, matrix then finally here the activation uh, values okay the output of this a1 a2 a3 can be represented by using the vector so here the weights also can be represented using the vectors uh, activation values also can be used uh, represented by using the vectors input values also can be represented by using vectors and here bias values also can be uh, represented by using the vectors suppose our data set is having multiple samples so so four samples are there how can we represent uh, by using the matrix or vector so here we are using this one uh, with, with two dimensional uh, uh, size so all the features you look at that previously we have used only single column so now we are using the uh, multiple columns so, so it is representing sample 1 sample 2 sample 3 sample 4 then bias uh, values then we will apply that same uh, calculation what we have done uh, in this step then that sa same thing we will apply here uh, so when you are applying that you will get for the sample one you will get uh, the output from all the output layer neurons then for the sample two you will get the output for the sample three you will get the output for the sample four you will get the output like that etc for the sample n you will get the output here so data can be represented by using the 
the vectors and also uh, matrix combination for the ml and dl applications not only for the neural network okay uh, if it is svm if it is the uh, logistic regression uh, if it is the uh, decision tree so all the uh, machine learning algorithms also needed vector and matrix combination then another one special kind of vector is attention vector so here this attention vector is uh, giving you more uh, attention or focus to the given uh, uh, region in the image or given uh, words in the natural process language so here when we are when we want to uh, convert the translation english to chinese okay here uh, we are using the chinese translation task the word is here i love music we have to translate into the chinese so when you want to uh, translate into the chi chinese which is the word in this given sentence is having more uh, attention that means more emphasis okay we have to emphasize the particular words to give more uh, attention so that words will have higher weights uh, than other words so in this one i love music so music is the word which is having more weight than another two words so here that word which is uh, higher value is having strong influence than another words during the translation of corresponding chinese uh, language so here we are giving the here we are using the uh, encoder auto encoder she is eating a green apple so here uh, eating is more emphasizing than another words and also apple right so in the apple also green apple so green is having more weightage so like that uh, we are uh, converting that into the uh, another language so here this will be this uh, process will be done and that values will be stored in the form of vectors okay so vectors are useful during the translation also in the attention vector and another one is gradient vectors so whenever we are using the back propagation for calculating the uh, updated weights we will use gradients so gradients here you look at that gradient of the error with respect to weights w11 this weight is w12 w11 in the second layer this is also second layer this is also second layer okay so this is one w1 with respect to uh, uh, w31 with respect to first layer w32 with respect to first layer so like that we can uh, represent the gradients of each and every weight vector in the form of a matrix or suppose if you have only this uh, three then we can use vectors so the vectors and uh, matrices are useful to represent the uh, gradients also so for example here we are having the function f of x equal to 3x square plus 2x plus 1 how do we calculate the gradient for this given function to find the gradient vector we have to apply the derivative partial derivation on this given function with respect to the uh, variable x when you are applying the partial derivatives f f dash of x is 6x plus 2 so here this term is giving you the 6x plus 2 this will become 0 then the gradient vector is now you got 6x plus 2 now suppose if you are having the plot like this okay so this is the gradient of f dash of x here we are having the x when you are varying the x value 1 2 etc infinity when you are varying the x value what is the value of f, f dash of x if you substitute the value f, uh, x equal to 1 then you will get f dash of x so if, when x equal to 1 you will get uh, value is 8 f dash of x is 8 so here you will get the f dash of x is 8 when you are substituting the value x equal to 2 then f dash of x will be uh, 14 so the value will be 14 so like that we can calculate the values right but that value should be represented in the form of vectors square bracket so to represent the value uh, of uh, any gradient also 
we can use the vector representation suppose if you are having so many weight parameters the for cal for representing all the weight parameters then we can use the matrix two dimensional matrix okay uh, here when has to be represented uh, or stop the algorithm whenever the slope or rate of change is reaching the zero close to the zero then we can stop the gradient calculation so here the gradient vector 14 is indicating the um, uh, function f of x equal to 3x square plus 2x plus 1 is having the slope 14 at the x value is 2. So, like this we can calculate the gradients and we can represent that gradients in, in the vectors or matrix. Thanks for watching.